Hi, I'm Al Gore, and I'm here to talk about the climate crisis and how we can solve it. There are two simple solutions to the climate crisis. We need to put a price on carbon in markets, and we need to put a price on denial in politics. Many people resist the idea of putting a price on carbon, partly because they don't recognize that we are already paying an enormous cost in the form of floods, droughts, famines, and we're unaware of it precisely because it is not priced into our markets. We're paying uh, the cost of carbon in the form of stresses on governance and the collapse of governance in some areas. So with all of these costs already being paid, it makes good sense to recognize them so that we can avoid the cost of carbon. We need to put a political price on denial. We learned in the world decades ago uh, the consequences of allowing the tobacco industry, proactively deceiving people and policymakers. It took 40 years before we broke through that denial. Some of the less responsible uh, businesses have hired some of the same PR and political specialists that perfected these techniques for the tobacco industry and are using them to deceive policymakers and publics about the true cost of, of carbon. And we have long since passed the point where uh, this can be described as anything but unethical and immoral. For almost the entire history of the human species, the percentage of our population living in cities never went above 10 to 15 percent of the total. Two years ago, for the first time, it rocketed up to above 50 percent. We could support an even larger population with better technologies, better design, better architecture, better transportation. But unless we move quickly, larger populations do have a much harsher uh, impact. If this is seen as an opportunity to use ecologically advanced architecture and urban planning, uh, it can lead to a reduction in the per capita impact. And as a profession, architecture has risen to this challenge in almost every country. It's very impressive to me. But policymakers and governments have to follow the lead of these uh, architects and developers who understand how they can save people money uh, and at the same time reduce the impact on the environment. Since the wealthy countries have been more at fault in causing the problem, they do have an obligation to assist the developing countries in adapting to these consequences. China's now the single largest source of global warming pollution. The current pattern is causing an air pollution crisis in China's uh, cities and uh, many other important regions. It is causing a water pollution crisis. There is an out-migration now of elites, at least, and others too, uh, from some cities that are so heavily polluted. Parents don't want their children to suffer these consequences. They know this. They have banned coal burning in three cities and have introduced a cap and trade system to be a pilot that will inform their decision to launch a nationwide cap and trade program in 2015. Over the next six to seven years, the vast majority of the world's people will live in regions where photovoltaic electricity is actually going to be cheaper than electricity made from burning coal. Carbon dioxide is invisible, tasteless, and odorless. But in spite of those qualities, it can be a marker for how to better and more efficiently manage a business, even in advance of governments deciding to do so in the market. An increasing number of our best managed companies are now using a what's called a shadow price 
on carbon. Unilever uh, is an example of an extremely well-managed business that uh, pays very careful attention not only to its impact on the environment, but also its impact on communities. Henry Schein would be another uh, example that is spectacularly successful in large part because it embeds this commitment to sustainability and to a higher ambition to do good in the world within its business plan. I strongly recommend that every business become aware of their impact on the environment and particularly their production of global warming pollution. By putting an internal price on the amount of carbon emissions they're responsible for, they can find, as many businesses already have found, that this is a magnificent tool for eliminating unnecessary expense and in the process saving not only pollution but also saving money and increasing profitability.